but I'll show you guys some ways that you can propagate them and allow them to live inside in the wintertime. Good morning from this old greenhouse. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. So I'm down at my greenhouse and it is the second day of summer. So it's gonna be getting hot down here pretty quickly. And my vent fan's gonna come on. So I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to talk where you guys can hear me. I need to get a microphone that might help. I think that's in my near future. But I thought while I was down here, I would share with you guys what I'm doing. So while I'm down here this morning, I thought I would propagate off of my Nepenthes, my pitcher plant. This is a carnivorous plant. It's a very tropical plant. It grows amazing in the greenhouse and throughout the year I like to do propagations on it and I'll show you guys an easy way to do it. So I live in zone 7a and these can live outside in the summertime. My neighbor has them hanging out on little posts in his yard throughout but now of course they have to go inside in the winter. They're very tropical but I'll show you guys some ways that you can propagate them and allow them to live inside in the wintertime first thing that I'm going to do is take a clipping off of this. This is a plant that you don't need to fertilize. It likes its own fertilizer by catching insects and things like that. It traps them in these pitchers. I'm going to take a little cutting. I'm going to try to cut at least something that has about three leaves on it. All right, so I'm back over here with one of the cuttings. Now, if you see this pitcher right here, it is kind of dried out on the top. Now, some of those will do that lack of humidity or just aging over time. And when they get to that point, when they get really brown all over and dried up, I, I normally cut them off. But as far as propagation goes, I normally cut the pitchers off. Now I have done it other times without cutting the pitchers off, but it does help a little bit with rooting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Now actually, I think I'm going to do three cuttings. I have enough on here to do that. Now what I normally do is I cut off the bottom leaves or I make them really short. That way it puts more energy into setting roots. And then I sometimes cut these off as well. And I'm gonna do that as well. So we've got one. And then I've got one more. And I'm just gonna do an experiment and leave a couple of these long and see how they do. See which one roots faster. So I have this one. This got about four leaves and I only cut one short. I've got this one where I left one long and then I have one where I have cut all of them. Now this is what I use to grow my Nepenthes in. It is called orchid moss or if you can find it, sphagnum moss. Pretty close and similar to the same stuff. And I also use little hydroponic cups because Nepenthes and carnivorous plants, they like to stay wet, but they also like to have aeration to be able to go through. So that is what I'm gonna do. I've also got some of these in these little ceramic pots that have air holes. I found these actually at the dollar store for like $3 a piece. Certain times a year, they like clearance these. And I find them over there. So when I do, I go buy them all. down in there. Now you can put a rooting hormone. I don't ever use rooting hormones. Um, they buy, you can buy them at the store like at Lowe's or you can use like cinnamon, but I just never had any issues propagated them without it. Now I'm going to show you guys what I do next and where I put them and what would be beneficial for you guys if you don't have a greenhouse. Now my greenhouse currently has about 59% humidity but I'll show you how I get more humidity for these things. Now a quick tip on carnivorous, now a quick tip on carnivorous plants. This is what I normally put mine in, one of these cocoa core baskets. They can breathe yet stay pretty moist. Now these have to be watered every single day in my greenhouse. And I mean sopping wet with a water hose. They really like the moisture. So if you keep them inside, keep that in mind, put them down in a bin or something like that. You generally, or take them outside if you have a large one like this and water them. And let them drip dry for a little while if you don't have a specific room that can catch the water. Some people put them in their house in little pots like this. But I figured out a good way to keep them really moist, especially when propagating. I'm putting them in a little terrarium, which is also a good 
way that you could bring them inside the house if you need to winter them over and keep them in high humidity. As you can see in here, the humidity is much higher. Now, if I put my aquarium lid on there, it even raises the humidity up more and would even warm it up in here if you were, say, bringing them inside in the winter time and needed to maybe put like a little heat mat underneath this aquarium and then put the lid on. It would be like a perfect tropical oasis for them. Okay, so here's my setup. I have got like a little 10 gallon aquarium. I put a little shelf organizer. Now on top of that, I sat a little piece of cross stitch canvas. You can get it at like the craft section at Walmart, maybe like a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or something like that. That keeps these things from falling through these little slats because my slats on this were a little bit too large. You might be able to find something that works a little better, but this works good. And this allows for them to get airflow, but stay very moist in here. And I may even put the lid on top of here, or at least maybe half of it and leave it open. What you want to do is just keep these things really watered. You want that moss inside of here to stay wet. And you want to keep water in the bottom of this terrarium. That way it'll keep the high humidity in here. And that is what they require. One reason why I keep them raised up is obviously to keep them out of the water, but also allow for the pitchers to grow and the leaves to grow out. If you were to have them in the house and you had larger plants growing in here, it would allow for them to trail down. Of course, you could get different size aquariums. I have one of the 10 gallon tall ones that I think I might bring out here that would work really good for some of these trailing plants or the bigger ones. But this is a perfect little setup you could do inside or winter over. You could put them near a window. You could use a plant light over them and be really cute. All right guys, for more updates, tips, information, follow my channel, follow my vlog. Some days I just go out and walk through the gardens or just keep y'all updated what I'm doing on my daily routine. I also am gonna start doing informational stuff. I have a greenhouse, obviously. I have gardens. I have a grow room in the making. I've got lettuce starting in there. So I'm just gonna go through these experiments and give y'all tips and show you how everything goes. Um, my husband and I are also gonna do a video pretty soon on the greenhouse field and kind of everything that goes on in this greenhouse and how it works and functions. And after having a greenhouse for a year and a half, the things we love about it, the things we maybe would have changed differently. So stay tuned for updates. I hope to see you on the next episode.